Hello and welcome. Today we're working on the liquidity ratios in financial analysis. If you're new, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn. We're working our way through the financial ratio categories here. And so remember we have POMS is the way to remember all the different categories. You have profitability. We have, so how we measure profit. We have activity or efficiency ratios. Liquidity, the one we're working on today is anything having to do with current assets and current liabilities. And we're trying to figure out the ability to pay our short-term debts or short-term liabilities. Then we have market ratios and we have solvency and solvency is long-term debt where liquidity is short-term debt. So here's what we need to, to know. We need to know, for example, we need to know about a company's current assets and current liabilities. So here I've pulled Apple's financial statements. This is the balance sheet. And so our current assets would include anything that will be used up or converted to cash within one year or less. So things like cash and cash equivalents, marketable securities, accounts receivable, so on, all this is current assets. Now the very first part of liabilities is current liabilities. These are liabilities that are due in one year or less. So I'm just going to grab and copy those numbers over and so we have the total current liabilities because we'll need that to divide or uh, subtract or whatever. So for Apple, let's do the liquidity ratios. We have four. We have the working capital or sometimes called the net working capital. And that's just simply going to be the current assets minus the current liabilities. And we come up with a dollar amount. Now, this is very similar to the current ratio where we divide, but we we will see a lot of times working capital or net working capital is a number that is calculated. So we're going to show you how to calculate that. So you make sure you're in good shape on that. So I'm going to grab the total current assets and I'm going to subtract out, uh, that's current liability. Sorry. I'm going to subtract out the current liabilities that I've copied over here. So we have a little bit um, negative, and so it looks like 1,742, but these numbers are in millions. So this is really $1.7 billion. We have slightly less current assets than we do current liabilities for 2023, but we used to have a little bit more uh, liabilities than uh, current assets for 2022. So you can compare the difference. Now, if we do this as a ratio, current ratio is the current assets divided by the current liability. So we do the same math. I'm going to point to the total current assets here and we're going to divide this by the current liabilities and we get something like 0.99. Now this is not a percent. This is going to be in a uh, number format. So 0.99. So what does this mean? Well, in 2023 for every dollar we have on the bottom of current liabilities, we have 99 cents of current assets to theoretically pay off our current liabilities. So we're close to one. The previous year we were at 88 cents for every dollar of liabilities. We only had 88 cents of current assets to hopefully pay off the current ratio. Now the current ratio or the current liabilities, I should say, the current ratio is based on current liabilities that we expect to pay within 12 months and the current assets are what we use to pay that off and typically it's going to be cash. So this is one measure that, that every company calculates is the current ratio. Now there might be some standard you might want to look at your um, industry or competitors or your past history. So you see from your the first year to the second year the current ratio for Apple has improved and they might say we want it to be something like 1.1 or 1.5 or something like that. And so they might have a standard that they're looking at. Now the quick ratio is going to be a little bit stricter because we're going to take out the big category we're taking out is inventory. Sometimes inventory is slow to sell. We can't sell it. We can't collect cash very quickly. So we're worried about, well, what if we can't sell inventory? Are we still going to be in good shape? So here, we're going to have to do a little uh, bit of math here. So let me start with the parentheses and go back to the little balance sheet. So I want cash and I want um, 
marketable securities. I'm going to take the accounts receivable. The big thing I'm taking out is inventory. Now, other current assets would be prepaid items or something like that. So I'm going to take the sum. I probably need the sum of all these. Be easy to calculate here. The sum of these numbers, not including the inventories. So I've got cash, marketable securities, and receivables. And all that divided by our current liabilities. Close the parentheses here. This should work. And so here we have 0.84. So leaving out, and this is not a dollar amount, we're just going to put it uh, as a whole number, as a decimal. So leaving out the inventory and the other assets, the other current assets, reduce it a little bit. So we have, in terms of cash, accounts receivable, and marketable securities, we have 84 cents for every dollar on the bottom for liabilities. Now, that's better than the previous year because the previous year we only had 71 cents. Now, the most strict test of all would be something like cash ratio. And the cash ratio, you might say, well, we're going to do um, cash and cash equivalents. And the other way you might think about it, you might include marketable securities. So we'll do it the most strict way, but it could include marketable securities. And you just want to be consistent. So let's just do cash only on this one. So we'll say uh, cash divided by the current liabilities. And we end up with something like 0.21. So for every dollar of current liabilities, we have cash of 21 cents. Now, some people would include, you would include at the top, you'd include cash plus marketable securities. And because that is ready, easy to sell and, and convert to cash. And so you might want to include uh, the cash plus the marketable securities. Here, I'm using the most strict test just cash only, not marketable securities. And if we copied across the previous year, not that way, the previous year is going to be 15 cents. So we've improved. So from 2022 to 2023, Apple's liquidity um, ratios have improved. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.